Hormonal regulation of the stomach and small intestines is a little bit more complicated, so we'll spend a little bit more time on this topic. These hormones are coming from the digestive organs themselves for the most part. So don't forget, a lot of hormones are made by epithelial tissue, so most of these hormones will be coming from the epithelium of the mucosa of the stomach or small intestine. Don't forget that these are hormones, and by definition, hormones are released into a body fluid, usually blood. So these hormones are being released into the blood, not into food, which is a very common misconception that students have. I mean, okay, yeah, food at this point is probably a liquid and hormones get released in the liquids, but um, th that's not what's happening here. We need the hormone to get into the blood so they can travel through the bloodstream to go to the appropriate targets. If we release the hormone into the food, it would be digested. So it's not gonna be very helpful there. In terms of the targets, where, you know, where are these hormones going? Oddly enough, sometimes they go right back to the main organ that just released it, just a different part of that organ, right? Um, but they can go out to other digestive system organs too. The main targets overall will be the stomach, small intestine, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. So this is a list of selected hormones that we're going to look at that are made by the digestive system. So we'll take a look at gastrin, which is produced by the stomach, secretin and CCK, which are made by the small intestine. Actually, the small intestine can also make gastrin, but I think I'll talk about that. The pancreas makes two hormones, but actually these hormones have nothing to do really with the digestive system itself. Instead, these hormones are needed to regulate blood sugar levels. Insulin is used to help lower blood sugar levels right after you've eaten a meal, whereas glucagon is used during periods of fasting, so between like breakfast and lunch, for example, and it helps to increase blood glucose levels when you're not eating. The main hormone produced by the stomach is gastrin, and the gastrin will actually stimulate the stomach to basically do things like make more gastric juice and contract more and this all happens due to the presence of food entering the stomach. The source of gastrin is specifically enteroendocrine cells that are part of the epithelium of the stomach mucosa. These enteroendocrine cells are called G cells because they make gastrin, so that's really easy to remember. Don't forget the gastrin is released into the bloodstream, not into the food, right? So you can see my little happy face here showing you how the enteroendocrine cells are releasing gastrin and it goes to the blood not into the gastric pit or the lumen of the stomach. What causes the release of gastrin is basically the presence of food in the stomach. But the different types of things that are detected specifically are like the stomach stretching due to the presence of food, or like when food enters the stomach, it actually causes the stomach acid to become a little bit more alkaline, the pH increases a little bit, and that can be detected by chemoreceptors. There's other chemoreceptors that can detect the presence of increased protein levels in the stomach and all of that, like I said, happens when food is entering the stomach. So the gastrin gets released in the bloodstream and oddly enough, it does come right back to the stomach <laughs> and it will stimulate various things of the stomach, but mostly it's stimulating the cells of the epithelium to make more of their secretions and it's stimulating muscle. So gastrin will stimulate parietal cells to make more hydrochloric acid, an intrinsic factor. Gastrin will stimulate chief cells to make more pepsinogen. Gastrin will stimulate the mucus producing cells to make more mucus to protect that stomach lining. And gastrin will stimulate the muscle, the smooth muscle, especially the muscularis externa, which will help to increase mixing type actions. The two major hormones released by the small intestine are secretin and CCK. Like gastrin, both of these hormones are released by the epithelium of the mucosa, but in this case of the small intestine. Secretin is released when the duodenum, first part of the small intestine, detects high levels of hydrochloric acid entering. So of course, when the chyme leaves the stomach and enters the duodenum, that's when we will have high levels of hydrochloric acid in the duodenum. The function of secretin is going to be to stimulate the pancreas to release buffers. And this makes sense because what causes the release of secretin is hydrochloric acid. And 
The answer to this, the function of secretin, is to cause the pancreas to release more buffers in order to buffer the hydrochloric acid. CCK is also known as cholecystokinin, and I'll explain how that name actually makes sense in a little bit. CCK is going to be released when the duodenum detects partially digested proteins and fats entering the duodenum. So basically, this is going to happen when the chyme is going to leave the stomach and enter the duodenum. The function of CCK is going to be to stimulate the pancreas to release digestive enzymes. And this makes sense because we just had proteins and fats come into the duodenum, and now we need to digest them, right? So CCK will stimulate the pancreas to release digestive enzymes, but it does other things too. CCK stimulates the gallbladder to contract. And this is important because that will push bile towards the duodenum and bile is needed to help digest the fats that just entered the duodenum. CCK also relaxes the hepatopancreatic sphincter, which of course is needed in order to get the pancreatic enzymes and pancreatic buffer and bile into the duodenum. So I mentioned cholecystokinin. It sounds like a weird word, but it actually makes sense. Kinin means to move and the coal is referring to bile. So CCK is named for the fact that it moves bile out of the gallbladder and into the duodenum. Both CCK and secretin also target the stomach to turn it off. Why do you think that's happening? Right? Why, do you, why, why does it make sense for CCK and secretin to have an additional job of telling the stomach to stop contracting, stop making gastric juice. If you're thinking, well, because the food is no longer in the stomach, it's now in the duodenum, you're correct. So we don't need the stomach to be contracting now. We don't need gastric juice to be made now because the, the chyme has left the stomach and now it's into the duodenum. The small intestine can also release gastrin. So we know the effects of gastrin because we just talked about that with regards to stomach. We know that gastrin increases stomach activity. What do you think happens to make the duodenum release gastrin? What, what is entering the duodenum that's unusual or wrong or unexpected, right? Surprising, the duodenum's like, whoa, that's not supposed to be in here. I need to, I need to release gastrin. So what do you think could be entering into the duodenum that would make that happen? If you said, basically under digested food, you're correct. So sometimes the stomach doesn't do its job, right? And under digested food products enter in the, into the duodenum and the duodenum says, oh, hang on, you know, wait a minute, stomach. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna turn you off. I'm gonna turn you on because with whatever food that's left inside of you, I need you to kind of pick up your activity a little bit, right? Make sure you're properly doing your job of at least partially digesting these nutrients. So we're gonna put some of these different things together that we learned to look at regulation of gastric activity. So this is looking at regulation of gastric, AKA stomach activities, but the small intestine will be involved too. We have three phases, if you will, to gastric activity. The cephalic phase, where we get the stomach started, get it ready. The gastric phase, which is stomach being full speed ahead, doing its job, right? Very, very, very active stomach. And then the intestinal phase where we're stopping the stomach because the food is now in the duodenum. The cephalic phase is called cephalic because cephalic means head. And a lot of what gets this particular phase activated are things involving the head. Like you seeing food, are you tasting food? Are you thinking about food, right? All of those things can stimulate the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata will then send parasympathetic nervous system signals to the stomach saying, ooh, we might actually get some food soon. Prepare for food. So the stomach cells will begin to increase their secretions, you know, the parietal cells, the chief cells, the mucus cells, and the G cells too. The G cells get stimulated by the parasympathetic nervous system to make more gastrin. So if you've ever you know, smelt something really delicious like fresh baked bread, right, or roasted chicken, and your stomach actually rumbled, this is why. 
during the gastric phase, this is when food has actually entered the stomach, right? So for example, the stomach stretches when food enters it and that will activate, those mechanoreceptors will activate the medulla oblongata and then the medulla oblongata will send parasympathetic nervous system signals to the stomach, stimulating the G cells to make more gastrin, which will then stimulate the parietal cells, chief cells and other stomach cells to make more gastric juice. And of course, both the nervous system and the gastrin will stimulate the muscularis externa to make sure there's more mixing action. The gastric pH is going to increase when the food enters and there's going to be proteins that are in the stomach and of course those can be detected by the stomach and we know that those will also activate the G cells which will make gastrin which will cause the other cells to make more gastric juice. Once the food leaves the stomach and enters into the duodenum, we're in the intestinal phase and it's time to stop the stomach. So the presence of acid and the presence of partially digested food entering the duodenum is what is going to stimulate this particular phase. When those things are detected, the chemoreceptors will send signals to the medulla oblongata, which will then send sympathetic signals to the stomach because the sympathetic signaling is going to decrease activity in the stomach. It's going to inhibit the G cells and inhibit the muscularis externa of the stomach turning the stomach off. Don't forget that the presence of acid and partially digested food entering the duodenum is also what's going to cause the release of the intestinal hormones, CCK and secretin. And CCK and secretin also affect the stomach and cause it to stop its activity. So these hormones will inhibit G cells from making gastrin, so they inhibit the production of gastric juice, which will stop stomach activities.